to hear an episode of Chord Playing. This is the Chords of ACDC, and we're going to be talking about Malcolm and Angus Young, of course. And ACDC formed in 1973 in Sydney, Australia, and even though they're thought of as an Australian band, the Young brothers were technically born in Scotland, and their family moved there in 1963, which was 10 years before ACDC even formed. But there's something really primal and just, I don't know what it is about ACDC's music. It's always hit me a certain way, and if I'm driving in my car, I always find myself turning it up louder and driving a little bit faster just from that raw energy that they feed off of, you know, and you hear it and it's like, yeah, you know, and it's the primal kind of simplistic drums, you know, steady bass parts, power chords ringing, you know, in the background. And of course, Angus, you know, playing a biting, you know, solo. And there's just something about it, you know, it's just magic when you hear it. And, uh, you know, it definitely kind of bummed me out when Malcolm passed away, you know, about three years ago, I guess it was 2017. And you know, I knew he was having some health problems and memory issues, and then he was gone. And it really hit me, you know, in a bad way where I thought, man, that's the engine of ACDC. You know, you can think of Angus like a fancy paint job, but Malcolm really was the engine that drove that rock and roll machine. Both the young brothers had a lot of the same influences with music, and they were both hopelessly obsessed with Little Richard when they were younger. And Little Richard just recently passed away, which is horrible. You know, rest in peace. But uh, I found that interesting that they both really found, you know, Little Richard around the same time, and they loved, you know, his music. And then when you start moving into, you know, uh, their budding musicianship, you know, they got into people like Chuck Berry, of course. And definitely Malcolm uh, was a huge, you know, Pete Townsend and the Who fan, you know, John Lee Hooker. They definitely like a lot of blues and Hendrix and the Stones and stuff like that. But uh, there are some similarities between Malcolm Young's playing style and Pete Townsend, which definitely Malcolm was a big fan of, of Townsend. And there's just something about, you know, that kind of open position, uh, energetic rhythm playing, you know, where you have, you know, open position chords with it ringing open strings and a little bit of overdrive, not, not very much distortion or overdrive, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit more power or energy. But uh, there's actually a lot less in overdrive in ACDC's music than you might imagine. But uh, anyway, this lesson's going to be pretty basic, but there are some things you can definitely learn from studying you know, Malcolm Young's playing style. And this is going to be kind of a tribute to Malcolm. We are going to hit some things from Angus too, but it's going to be a lot of Malcolm in this lesson. I just shared that image with Malcolm's thumb, you know, it's kind of a secret weapon for muting and dampening, and occasionally he would use it for fretting, but normally he used it for muting the low E string. And I wanted to kind of show, you know, his actual hand, and how his thumb was almost always kind of peeking out over here, ready to mute or, you know, grab a note if, ne you know, if necessary. And that's the first thing we should probably talk about before we jump into any riffs or songs, is just is kind of chord approach, you know, a lot of open position power chords and you're muting, you know, specific strings because you're hitting the strings really hard with your pick. So here I'm just going to basically move down, you know, a D5, A5 to E5. But if I do that and I hit it a certain way, it immediately sounds like ACDC. <laughs> just banging the strings with my pick, playing that big D5 right there, A5, and the E5, but you want it to ring, you know, let those chords kind of breathe, you know, you don't want to start doing something else, just let them kind of ring like that, and let them flow. Now right there with the D, uh, he normally would be muting that low E string just in case because he really would rear back and strum those strings with authority but he wouldn't you know want that low E to ring so he mutes it. The same thing with that A and then when you move to the E power chord you can kind of move that thumb off to the side. 
Now a G power chord, you could find him playing it like that. Sometimes he would just use his middle finger and mute, you know, the A string and just play the third fret on the low E, the open D and open G, and he wouldn't play, you know, that B string. And then sometimes he would use the B string right there on the third fret. So that's interesting to kind of get used to some of their chords, you know, they're simple, but uh, there's something about the way that they would strike them or strum them and also let the chords ring too. So take a song like Livewire from uh, High Voltage and you can see what I'm talking about. It's just an A power chord to an E power chord to a B power chord. But there's so much attitude and this energy when they're playing it. That's really all you need are those three power chords just ringing. And it's something like this. <laughs> strumming and picking through the strings, you know, kind of aggressively. Not super aggressive, but you are hitting, you know, your pick against the strings. And then it picks up. It's just that simple, you know, kind of just power chord, you know, riff, but uh, there's something about the way it's played, the uh, kind of primal drums, simple, you know, kind of just prodding, you know, root note bass part, and then those power chords, but it's powerful. You know, that's really all that song needed to get started were just those simple chords. For another example of this, look at the song Jailbreak, you know, from the album 74 Jailbreak, and I think this is one of my favorite ACDC songs. It's just... Tons of attitude, but it's very, very simple. You know, very simple. It's just basically kind of plowing into this E power chord, and then a D power chord to an A, and there's a little kind of percussive strumming. hear that like rake or that kind of muted strum you know kind of hiding in there another example of this look at the song walk all over you from uh, highway to hell and you've got this kind of condense those riffs, but you can see it starts with that low E just ringing, and then you just walk into a G, and you kind of walk into it and strum that G power chord right there. Go to a D, and then an A power chord. And once again, just let those chords ring. kind of picks up right up next is the song that opened this lesson uh, let's get it up from the album for those about to rock we salute you and it's something like this <laughs> Once 
again, very simple riff, but that's all that song needed to just kind of kickstart and grab your attention. And that's a great riff, even though it's really simple. Um, you're just walking up the low E, you're kind of sliding up there, you know, from the low E open to that F sharp to G sharp. And there you're just grabbing that B and that E on the A and the D string. And then an A, a D over A, and then back to that A. And the D over A is kind of that 70s, you know, kind of chord shape that we've talked about before. So the first time you're just going to basically hit that A and then do the D over A twice. And let it ring. And then do it again. second time through just after you do the D over A go back to A at the end and then you start that whole riff again next up we have the song right on which is from the Dirty Deeds album, and I think this is my favorite ACDC song. It's just completely different than everything else they ever did. Kind of a slow blues, and Angus' the solo in this song is awesome, but uh, it's very different. You know, we're not really using power chords. Now it's this kind of blues progression, but they're using, you know, Malcolm's using fragments of chords. So it's like a partial C to an F, like this. <laughs> got that heartbeat kind of bass line. And that kind of thing. And the chords basically after that C and F kind of back and forth, it's going to move from the F to a B flat. G, a partial G to a C, and then the B flat back to the F, and then go back to that C and F again. So you're literally kind of moving around, um, you know, creating this chord progression using these partial chords partial C, partial F, and then the F to B flat, and then the G to C flat to F and then repeat that whole cycle again. song too but I love that guitar part it's very unusual and uh, when the band is playing you know all their parts it just sounds full and huge but then by itself it does sound a little bit empty but uh, but that's right on right up next is shake your foundations from the fly on the wall album I'm pretty sure this is an Angus riff but it's really cool something like this <laughs> And there it's basically flirting with like a D sus4 to a D5. And then it's basically a little piece of D minor, a little piece of C over D, and then a little piece of G over D. Something like that. riffs like that. It's kind of old school, but I like that. The last example is kind of a rarity in ACDC's catalog. This is the song DT, which is one of the only instrumentals in uh, their whole catalog of music. And it came from the album Who Made Who, which Who Made Who also served as the soundtrack to uh, the Stephen King movie Maximum Overdrive. And Maximum Overdrive is awful. You know, that's a horrible, horrible movie. 
Uh, it's funny because it's so bad. Um, it's a good story, but just not a very good movie. But uh, one of the most noteworthy things about that movie is the fact that ACDC did the soundtrack. And I know the first time I ever watched it, like in the opening credits, and I saw ACDC's name, and I thought, man, this movie's going to be good. And of course, I watched it and realized that it wasn't very good. Um, but I do like the song. I've actually worked on the song with a lot of students over the years, and it's one of those... Like I said, kind of a rare moment, even with the gated kind of reverb drums or whatever. I mean, it definitely dates the song because it sounds very 80s, but it still rocks. You know, it's just one of those great songs, something like this. <laughs> So right there, it's basically just a C power chord, and then you're kind of lifting that part to grab part of B flat right there. Like that. You could also slide, you know, C to B flat, but I think that's actually what they're doing right there. And then you're gonna slide into that G and grab a little piece of C minor seven right there. And then the sus two right there. you've got the C, A to F move, which you could just play that as an arpeggio right here too, but I hear a pull off, so I think he's actually doing it that way. song rocks and that part that comes in after that it's so simple but I mean it sounds like you're getting ready to get in a street fight or something it just sounds gritty and dark <laughs> episode of chord play with the chords of ACDC and it should be pretty obvious I'm a big ACDC fan I've loved them since I was like in middle school technically and it's just that raw kind of primal caveman like energy it just you know hooked you know I was a sucker for it the first time I heard it I thought you've got to be kidding me what is that ACDC okay I like it you know and the next thing I knew I was listening to it and that was before I even played guitar you know I was kind of getting into some of their, their music and then by the time I picked up a guitar and started playing, I thought, hey, I can almost play some of this ACDC stuff. And definitely a big influence on me and millions of other people out there. Right, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.